What's it like for the dev team at Ubisoft to be making Beyond Good and Evil 2? And can the team in Montpellier learn anything from Santa Monica Studios, the developers behind God of War? Hello, fellow space monkeys. This is the Mildly Morose Man, otherwise known as Dan or Dan the Man, whichever you fancy. I am here to bring you another thought-provoking video on the development of Beyond Good and Evil 2. Be sure to subscribe if you want to stay up to date on all things Beyond Good and Evil 2. God of War was released last year on PlayStation 4. If you don't know by now, it's supposedly really good. I don't own a PS4, so I never got to play the game, but I hope I'll get a chance to play it someday. And that's what led me to watch a documentary capturing what it was like for the studio in Santa Monica to recreate the God of War franchise. It's almost two hours long, but I really enjoyed it. The link will be in the description below, as well as in the eye in the top corner. I wanted to share with you all four important insights from the documentary that might give us a window into what it is like for Ubisoft to be working on such a massive title with BG&E 2. So let's dive right in to these four insights. Number one, during the development of God of War, the studio moved into a new building. We know from the last live stream that the main studio behind Beyond Good and Evil 2 is moving into a new studio to continue and eventually finish their work on the game. When this happened for Santa Monica, in the middle of developing God of War, the team was encouraged by the better working conditions. I feel re-energized, you know, to be honest. I feel like, you know, I just feel pumped up for whatever's gonna be next. The inspiration is definitely in the building now. I mean, we have to step up and make something fantastic because we're in a fantastic place. A new studio also meant that Sony was financially supporting Santa Monica Studios. I think we can know the same is true for Ubisoft and the studio in Montpellier. People in high places believe in the game that Michelle Ansel is dreaming up, so we can see that they are being supported by people with deep pockets, just like the team behind God of War. Number two, Santa Monica Studio worked hard to reimagine their old IP. The latest God of War game was a major reimagining for the series. Kratos became known for being a man who handled conflict with rage and violence who had killed both his wife and child, and now they wanted to have Kratos grow up into something different. They wanted him to be a father. Even in the earlier games, that's how I kind of rooted myself in the first story, was writing the first few drafts with my dad, and kind of finding the struggle of Kratos and Zeus, the sort of father-son story. But this father-son story is told from that different angle, the son becoming the father. Ultimately, the story focused on this character development as Kratos and his son reacted against and learned from one another. The overall theme of this is that the kid is going to teach Kratos how to be a human. Kratos is going to teach the kid how to be a god, right? Each of them has a piece of them missing, and they kind of help each other out on this buddy road trip movie. In a similar way, Montpellier has been working to reimagine the Beyond Good and Evil universe and game world. It is a massive undertaking and requires a lot of time and effort to make changes that make sense in the game world while also pushing the series forward. Number three, the studio had to manage expectations after building an impressive demo. Game development takes a lot of time. It took five years for the team at Santa Monica Studios to make God of War. If we include the time it took for Montpellier to develop the engine behind Beyond Good and Evil 2, then the time spent developing this game already surpasses the time spent to make God of War. Yet development cycles seem to ramp up significantly as more time is spent on a given title. Consider how the timeline for God of War played out after they showed the initial demo at E3 2016. Everybody's telling me, my gut is telling me, what we did on E3 doesn't scale. You know, but the scary thing was, like, we showed 10 minutes and 45 seconds or something, and it took a year and a half to get there. And now we have a year and a half left, essentially, and we have, like, 30 hours to make, and you're kind of scratching your head, like, how is that humanly possible? Santa Monica Studios faced a massive challenge to create a game that matched the experience of that first demo back in 2016. Beyond Good and Evil 2 has not reached that level of polish just yet. What we've seen is alpha footage with much of the game's core mechanics still in a development stage. But because of the nature of the Space Monkey program, fans expect to see progress when progress is made. Already, there have been critiques of BG&E 2, some of those critiques wildly unfounded. But it's a challenging thing to manage fans' expectations. This is especially true because of the nature of game development. Number four, game development is dramatic by nature. This documentary does a great job capturing the drama of making a video game. 
There are so many moving parts in game development, and so much of development is trying to create awesome stuff and then having to confront people when the awesome stuff doesn't work the way they thought it would. And so much of the development of God of War was centered on problem solving. This is a good example of like the average scenario that happens in a day in my life. Seriously? Now I'm looking at the game as a whole going, there's no way we're gonna stabilize this. Just imagine how stressful it would be knowing that the game you've been working on for five years is in an unplayable state. All game development goes through cycles of fixing broken things. And I'm sure the team in Montpellier has already had to face their fair share of challenges. But until the game reaches a stable and playable state, the game's development will continue to be a dramatic experience for everyone involved. But the hard work paid off for the video game God of War, and I hope beyond Good and Evil 2, will be just as much a success for Michelle Ancel and all the studios working on the game. It is a challenging thing to reimagine an old IP. I'm sure Ubisoft has already been challenged by the response of the Space Monkey program to developing a new game that pushes on the boundaries of what Beyond Good and Evil was back in the early 2000s. Santa Monica was able to do it with God of War. I have hope that Ubisoft will be able to do it with Beyond Good and Evil 2. Now you are ready. For what? A new beginning. Would you like to see a documentary like this on BG&E2's development? Could you imagine what it would have been like for the Santa Monica team to have a Space Monkey program for God of War? What are developers supposed to show fans when they face major challenges in game development? Drop a like if you enjoyed the video at all, or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching, and be back for the next one if you want to hear more about Beyond Good and Evil 2.